Um, I want to talk about online bullying as per the request by DevShell2 on Sunday because I think it is an important topic and I think it doesn't get discussed anywhere near enough and I think it's a real problem. It's a real problem for the victims, yes, but online bullying is a real problem for all of us even if you don't perpetrate or suffer from online bullying because I'm not so sure what the political discourse is like in America regarding this subject. But here in the UK, the authorities are considering different methods through which they can deal with online bullying, uh, making certain things a crime. Now, I have a problem with that in general because I am sick and tired. I'm fed up with the authorities coming up with new and different ways to curtail free speech, coming up with new and different ways to fine or imprison the population. Having said that, Online bullying is a serious problem for the victims, definitely, absolutely, and we can't be in denial about it. Online bullying does exist. I mean, does anybody in this room seriously think that Anita Sarkazian doesn't get death threats and hate mail? You know, of course she feels like she's the victim of online bullying because she is. Now, most of us are in her position but plenty of us have suffered from online bullying. I've been pretty fortunate in that regard and I haven't really been uh, the victim of bullying to any significant degree. I've had my fair share of trolls, especially back in the old days when my channel used to be popular. But uh, suffice to say that I deal with trolls in my own way. And that's one thing I wanted to talk about. I want to talk a little bit about the difficulties with interacting online in the first place. Um, you know, with the absence in the comment section, most people's fate are faceless. And uh, so in the absence of any idea what someone's uh, facial gestures are communicating, what their, the intonation behind the words they're writing is lost because they're not speaking them, they're typing them and so forth. And these are real problems with communicating online. Um, sarcasm can be incredibly difficult to get across in a comment and so forth. Any sense of humor for that matter can be hard to get across. And so it's difficult to distinguish when you're receiving a comment. Sometimes if someone's just having a laugh, sometimes it's completely goes right past you. You know, you don't know. And because you are so accustomed to getting hostile comments, you take jokes as hostility. And let's talk about hostility for a second. At what point does hostility become bullying? That, all by itself, that's a question which I don't think has a correct answer. But it's a legitimate question. And it's one they would have to answer if they were going to try to... Uh, legislate online bullying. Equally, uh, you know, at what point does repeated contact with someone become pestering? And at what point does pestering become harassment? Is all harassment bullying? Where are the lines for any of this stuff? I think if we let the authorities um, legislate online behavior in any way curtail your free speech online, everything's at risk. Uh, mockery, satire, uh, having a disagreement with someone uh, can easily turn into a flame war and therefore you know people are at risk of committing offenses basically just for having a disagreement if they use the wrong language so maybe it would be a good idea to try to avoid hyperbole as much as possible. This can be very difficult because sometimes people say such stupid shit that you, in order to make your point you have to be over the top a little bit. And this is another thing I wanted to talk about. If, I mean, if you're going to be online and it's easy to say, oh well you shouldn't be easily offended, but the fact is everyone's got different sensibilities, we've got different age groups, different cultures. The whole mix is online, the whole world's online. Which is another reason as well why it's going to be hard to legislate this kind of thing in the first place, but I digress. Um, now normally, rather than legislation, I would be an advocate for social pressure. But let me ask you this, my worthy audience. Isn't social pressure a acceptable form of bullying? At what point would social pressure be seen to be bullying? Why isn't bullying seen as social pressure? Just a thought. I want to leave you with this final thought. Almost never does someone win an argument, but you can change minds through discussion. Uh, we shouldn't put so, emphasis, so much emphasis on winning an argument. Say your piece, make sure you've said it well, let the other party say their piece. Changing the mind doesn't have to happen on the spot. 
So here's my recommendations. Never draw first blood. Try not to get hung up on having the last word. And if you're having a disagreement with someone, especially about something you feel passionately, um, if you are going to use hyperbole to make your point, start your comment, your disagreement, by saying something along the lines of, I respectfully disagree. So even if you are being a little bit on the harsh side, you've let them know that you're not necessarily trying to ignite a flame war.